So, dear ladies and uh, gentlemen, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you uh, to IDEA RS uh, product line webinar. It will be on, uh, uh, I will start broadcasting on interoperability between IDEA Statica pre-stressing and other analysis software. Uh, I would like to uh, stress at the beginning that uh, the objective is to advise on effective way of the design of uh, 3D pre-stressed structures in IDEA Statica. So we um, are not going to uh, show you how to use the program itself or the theoretical background of the program, but uh, we want to identify the workflow uh, for the analysis and design of such uh, uh, types of um, uh, structures. I switched off um, uh, the camera so that uh, you can concentrate on the presentation. So first of all, I would like to uh, explain very shortly uh, what the idea static pre-stressing is for. So it is uh, for the analysis of um, um, analysis and design of uh, members, uh, cross sections and details. You can see here prefabricated beams, but uh, we can also analyze uh, uh, structures or um, beams uh, cast in place or, uh, con uh, or uh, composite uh, concrete to concrete uh, uh, structures, bridges, and um, design strips of post-tangent uh, slabs. Uh, here you can see um, some examples uh, of uh, the structures. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, we have uh, the possibility of haunched uh, members uh, with general cross-section, uh, with general reinforcement, uh, with reinforcement templates, and other uh, useful features uh, for the design. And this is uh, the flagship. Uh, we have included uh, the construction stages, time-dependent analysis, and uh, a design of uh, composite concrete to concrete uh, structures. So this is the short description, and now I go to uh, the, this interoperability. Uh, we can identify three levels of idea statica interoperability. First level is when you import the structural model and uh, results of the analysis into idea statica BIM, uh, which means um, the program which connects our idea statica of other functionality. We can import uh, this uh, data from Axis VM, MIDA Civil Engine, a Suprema Win, uh, Harfem, uh, Robot, CI Engineer, and also from IDEA Open Model, which is XML format. Second level of uh, IDEA Statica interoperability is when you import results only. We import only results into user uh, defined forces of uh, uh, either Statica BIM, BIM, sorry, or BIM, which is this uh, program for the connecti for, for the interfaces. Uh, then we can uh, uh, use all the programs uh, from which you can uh, export the results into Excel table. Once you are able to uh, export. Uh, your internal forces from your 3D software into Excel table, then we can import it into user-defined forces of IDEA Statica. Second possibility is to use uh, CIXML format, which we implemented just to make it more simple for uh, this type, this uh, users of CI Engineer. A third level of IDEA Statica interoperability uh, is that uh, we uh, have an external module which is uh, linked uh, to 3D system via COM interface. Such module, this is a module for pre-stressing and it is uh, linked to RFM and to Axis VM. I will show you two uh, of these um, levels and this will be the level two and level three. Um, 
So what will be the workflows uh, which I want to show today? Uh, first, I show the modeling of post-tangent bridge slabs. Uh, the model will be in uh, CI Engineer. Uh, we will analyze uh, moving loads in CI Engineer and we will use uh, the functionality of integration strips and XML export. Then uh, we will show uh, either static pre-stressing uh, for the definition of tendon and sectional design. Second example, uh, we will be dealing with this level three of interoperability and the workflow will be, I would say, even more, even more smooth. Um, we will model post-tension slab in residential house. 3D model and the functionality of so-called result beams will be in RFM. Then tendon geometry losses and effects of pre-stressing will be done in RF tendon module, which is uh, in fact idea module. And also design of 1D members uh, will be done in RF tendon design. Again, idea module. Uh, design, 2D, uh, design of 2D elements, uh, this reflection of 2D elements and uh, these calculations can be done then back in RFM. Third, uh, potential or possible workflow will be shown on the modeling of pre-tangent composite bridge, uh, in uh, which we will, we will again use RFM model, 3D model of, uh, for the analysis of moving loads. And then all these functionality construction stages, pre-stressing, time-dependent analysis, and sectional design will be done in either Statica. So let's uh, start first example. I will show you briefly uh, this uh, slides of PowerPoint presentation and I will switch into the example. Um, this PowerPoint presentation that will be then um, on our web page so you can download it anytime and see uh, the individual steps. So you will, uh, you will have a, a skew slab bridge in either in pardon, <laughs> pardon in a CI engineer, in which uh, I, I defined the integration strip as the distance of uh, the tendons. I assumed uh, 56 centimeters. I defined one strip for each tendon, and uh, uh, then the definition of uh, uh, of um, moving load was uh, done. Then we exported uh, this. Uh, um, data, the, the analysis of moving loads uh, from um, using XML output document from SIA. Then we can, um, pressing one button, we can import it into IDEA. We can assign uh, the types of load groups in um, uh, IDEA Statica, generate load combinations, input the tendons, and uh, analyze the losses, internal forces, and to make the design of the cross sections. So that was the workflow. Uh, should be quite smooth without uh, necessity to um, to rewrite uh, the, the the data uh, by hands uh, without the necessity of uh, any significant simplifications and things like that. So this is the final table of the sections and beams. Uh, designed in either uh, static and I will I will switch now into CI engineer you can see uh, the model um, with moving loads here with the um, integration strip uh, you probably know that if you go to uh, XML the input output document then you can export uh, this uh, document into XML file. I've done that, uh, so I can uh, close it and uh, go to I sorry idea um, idea Statica. Here I have opened uh, the beam. Uh, you can see the cross section. It is. Uh, that rectangular cross section part of the slab, it is in fact the width uh, of um, integration strip. If you go to tendon design, uh, then uh, idea 
uh, tendon design mirror is opened and you can use it to import input and uh, design the tendons uh, very simple construction stages uh, uh, are defined uh, then design member is taken from the beam uh, you can uh, see the tendons as i already uh, told you um, you can use spacers you can um, um, make for example here's these labels and then pressing the right mouse button uh, put it into dxf file and use it as a draft drawing uh, the tendons uh, here uh, you can see the tendon geometry for for individual points each point here for example the second point has some parameters third point above that um, you can use uh, the the possibility of scaling vertical and both horizontal uh, so now you can see here plane xy of this strip and plane xz so th this this would be um, the correct scale and here we have uh, the scaled uh, drawing in vertical direction uh, force design um, equivalent load possibly we can play with uh, the uh, picture so that we can get it uh, nicer um, we can show summary of uh, short-term loads in the table uh, sorry short-term uh, losses and also here the drawing of short-term losses and uh, design member results if we want to show it we would have to calculate uh, this example and to show uh, internal forces um, uh, in this uh, so now I go back to oh now it is finished so I can show it and I can show also um, primary secondary forces and other other forces uh, this is um, this is uh, the design of uh, um, tendons uh, but I haven't uh, shown the possibility of import uh, the forces in uh, from CI engineer uh, this um, geometry of the beam and the uh, load cases and also combinations were generated automatically using the wizard that was a topic for other uh, webinar which is already uh, recorded and it is on our web, uh, web pages um, uh, so today I will skip it and I will only go directly to user defined forces and uh, I will say I want to import the forces from XML and uh, I prepared uh, this XML file uh, you can see that it is text file from CI engineer and I open it uh, then a simple dialog will appear uh, the program is asking uh, if we, about the elements about the members to which we want to apply the forces so this is num member one member two total length is calculated um, you can adapt it if you want to import all internal forces or not and those are the load cases and combinations which were exported from ci engineer i press ok and the program will generate uh, in this case 44 uh, load cases I can use different scale so these are imported internal forces from CI engineer you can see bending moments for various uh, load cases as yes, now we have some some bending moments when we have it uh, we have to go to combinations and uh, we uh, need sorry two load cases and we need to adapt these uh, load groups as there were 44 uh, load cases then i do not want to delay this webinar and i will close this um, this uh, example and i prepared uh, the example which is um, already corrected after import of moving loads I did only this step that I selected each load case 
of this 44 and I uh, put it into IDUDL group or TS, tandem system group or pedestrian and cycle track, TS exclusive and other. In fact, I use uh, this um, table from Eurocode and uh, I concentrate only on a group of loads GR1A, which combines tandem systems and uh, uniformly distributed load and also these uh, loads on foodways and cycle tracks. So that's it. And uh, when we have a combination defined, I edit it. And the only step which I needed to do is that I edit to the list of combination, you can see a list of uh, dead load cases. And here we have also already the combinations like, sorry, the, the load cases like tandem system, a pedestrian, and uh, here it was UDL. So you move it from uh, available load cases into load combination, and uh, we have it done. When we have it, uh, then we can calculate it, uh, run, uh, the analysis of construction stages, simple construction stages are here. Uh, again, it was a topic of, uh, uh, of other um, webinar. Then I go to reinforcement. I define several uh, sections. Here you can see the red section is to be checked. Here are all the sections and I can run detailed analysis. Then uh, we go to RCS module for the design of uh, sections, non-pre-stressed or pre-stressed. All the data is generated, including uh, the effects of, uh, of uh, moving loads. And when I uh, calculated, I already prepared the reinforcement. You can see reinforced cross-section and all the sections are uh, satisfactory. We can see, for example, the section at mid-span here of the first span, go to checks and let's say response and we can uh, select all these uh, um, extremes. First is the extreme during the, the post-tensioning, second uh, other extreme during post-tensioning, then we have superimposed that load, other extreme of superimposed that load, end of design working live with uh, several such extremes. So you can see the design. We can also see torsion design or shear design, all these um, effects. So that's it. Um, I can close this example. And we go back to the presentation. All the um, ultimate limit states and serviceability limit states are checked and uh, then you can uh, you have this uh, example finished. Second example, which I prepared, is uh, the post tangent slab of residential house. You can see the real, this is, a, of course, um, uh, only a visualization of uh, uh, the residential house, but, but that one is already built. And uh, I was inspired by uh, this uh, uh, house some time ago. I was involved in the in the design of this house and at that time I designed this pre-stressed slab. I made a 3D model in RFM. You can see it here. It is part of the building. Then we exported it into RF tendon and uh, we designed necessary pre-stressing um, tendons here. You can see the structure and the city. And uh, here we have uh, finished uh, structure by the way this cantilever was 4.5 meters and there was quite long span here supported only by this uh, slender column so that was uh, the inspiration and i uh, pre prepared um, a new model a simplified model for uh, this uh, webinar uh, 3d model including um, Mm, all the data in uh, RFM, what well, was done in RFM. I will show uh, the necessary inputs. Then uh, in RF tendon, I uh, designed the geometry uh, of the tendon, calculated pre-stressing losses and all the effects of pre-stressing. 
and then we design uh, the um, individual um, design strips uh, in RF tendon design. When you go back to RFM, you can run nonlinear deflection calculations uh, with RF concrete surface. This is actually uh, the level of the interoperability three. So let's go to the example. I have it here. Um, this is um, this is uh, the example of uh, the of the structure. I can uh, switch it into transparent uh, to to be able to show you all the data. First of all, I should start with uh, uh, load cases. If you go to load cases, you can see that we have pre-stressing load case. This is the load case type of pre-stressing. This is absolutely necessary if you want to pre-stress the structure in RFM. Um, then we can probably uh, discuss the load combination. Of course, you have to define the combinations uh, which are um, to be checked during the life of the structure. So first, a, combin a set of combinations were the combinations of cell weight and pre-stressing only. That was at the time of pre-stressing. And then you see this for ULS and uh, three SLS combinations. And also other one with cell weight, pre-stressing, snow, and additional dead load uh, caused by the roof. So this is a little bit bigger combination. Of course, we can define more of them uh, to be checked. Uh, then uh, it is very useful um, property, and that's, so that's the possibility to define this uh, result beam. If I open it, uh, you see result beam. And actually, um, we analyze this structure as uh, 2D slab structure, and uh, we can integrate the forces um, across the um, depth of the slab and uh, in the width, which is just exactly between the tendons. So I, uh, here we have a, a width of the member 500 millimeters, and here I have it uh, uh, 1250 millimeters, means that there was a smaller cantilever and uh, also smaller span, so, so that was not necessary uh, to have uh, such big pre-stressing. So that's uh, the first important thing. And second is also the uh, beam and slab system. So we, here we have a rip. And you can see if I open it, it is rip of uh, the cross section here. Uh, it, is, um, um, it is linked to um, by, by, by these eccentricities to the slab. And together, you have also rib here in the transverse direction, and together with uh, rib and slab system, you can um, get a T-section, which then uh, will be pre-stressed in IDEA. Let me to see if I forget about anything. Uh, looks uh, no. So I can go to uh, add-on module. And I go to external modules, RF tendon. Then the external module is uh, opened. And uh, we can design. Actually, you see here this uh, green. Uh, it is already opened here, but I will finish. Uh, these green curves are the tendons. So here we have this external module. Again, simple construction stages, uh, design members. You can see how many design members we defined in this. First was the rib, which was uh, perpendicular or transverse, I would say, to the result beams. Uh, the, the, the second rib and slab is here. And we have also a set of result beams, RB1, RB2, 3, and so on, so on. So we can uh, go back uh, to tendons. If I select, for example, this rip, um, and I go to tendon layout, and I forgot to show you 3D picture so that you would uh, understand that uh, 
I use different cross section uh, for this uh, resulting beam for rip and slab system for a mid span and above the support. I used approximately the formulas from Eurocode. Um, so you can see that uh, we have um, integrated the forces from different width and also the uh, resisting cross section will be uh, different above the support and at mid span. You can also see it here. We have the cross section at zero position. If we go further, then we switch into rectangular cross section. Um, you can also see it here. Um, when we go, then the tendon changes the position and uh, you can check it. Uh, but this view of Anko view is uh, much better. You can define all the details like friction coefficients, anchorage set, and all other losses, anchorage stresses, uh, also parameters of the material. I'm not going to explain it. Uh, that was topic of other uh, other um, other webinar. Again, the equivalent loads, short-term losses, tendon losses, and we can also see design member results and this. Uh, the calculation takes some time in this um, case. I will uh, switch uh, into the, the other, the other, sorry. Here we have it. Uh, probably I will close it. Oh, here I opened uh, the file with the results already. Uh, so you can see um, uh, the member results in internal forces along the length of this, um, of this uh, rip and slab system. Those are the forces integrated um, in uh, the system rip and slab. So here we upload the data from RFM. And we will see it in a short time. And you can already see here the positions of uh, the uh, beam in which we defined uh, uh, the critical sections, which uh, have to be checked uh, uh, for the design of uh, cross sections. So. Maybe I can close the other, other. Just a second. I cannot get into Sorry about that. <laughs> I can see it, but uh, I can show this um, 
this is the model which you saw, and this is the model in uh, um, Idea Statica, and this is the third example. So, um, yes, now we have it. Sorry, it's a, we have it now. These are the results of normal force, uh, sh uh, s vertical shear force, and bending moment. Uh, we can uh, see again the construction stages. Um, we can design the reinforcement zones in uh, along the length of the beam, and uh, as I explained already, the positions of the uh, design uh, or this. Uh, positions of the sections for the design. If I uh, press this uh, button, then uh, all the data is uploaded to uh, individual cross sections and uh, we can perform the check. So all um, construction stages data and integrated forces are now opened here in the cross section. You see, I already uh, made the design of the reinforcement, and all these sections except of this one are satisfactory. Uh, this one was uh, only six, 0 0.6 percent uh, uh, insatisfactory. But if you go to stress limitation, and we see that the difference is um, only. 0 0.1 megapascals in concrete in compression in this fiber so I uh, let it um, be because I believe this is a quite acceptable design. Uh, we can see individual sections. This is the T section uh, above the support. This is at, um, part, sorry, sorry, this is at mid span. This is above the support again. Uh, at mid-span, we can uh, see some shear analysis. Uh, you can see that there is significant uh, horizontal shear force too because of uh, horizontal shear between the result beams, torsion and interaction. And I already shown stress limitation. I haven't shown uh, crack width. So this is uh, the design. And then we can go back and similarly as I did it for uh, RIP and I can sh select, I think it was uh, result beam 5, which I uh, made the design. So I select this result beam 5 and uh, we can see um, the design of the slab uh, at this uh, design strip. I'm sorry, it takes a little bit time, which is a surprise for me, but um, maybe go to meeting, take some. Yes, we have it here. So, um, Not sure if I have, uh, yes, this is already designed. So similar to this one, we can generate uh, the cross sections and above the supports at mid span, above the support at the end of the cantilever. And again, uh, we can perform uh, the design of this uh, section. So it is done already. Uh, we can see shear, torsion, um, also if I set response on, you can see response of the section at ultimate limit state for phase one, phase three and two. These are different uh, parts. So this reinforcement, which I designed uh, along the length of uh, the result beams uh, should be then used in the slab as non-pre-stress reinforcement. And when we go back to RFEM, 
uh, then we can perform, we can edit. This reinforcement, unfortunately, is not um, uh, transferred or, or written back to RFM, this non-pre-stressed reinforcement. You have to define it in RFM again or the, the same and check uh, the nonlinear deflection if uh, uh, it is satisfactory or not. So this was the, uh, the case of, of the second example. Um, this uh, uh, level of the interoperability three. And now I will go back to a second. Uh, that is just because I want to uh, analyze composite bridge. I will show you the PowerPoint presentation of one span composite bridge, but then I will have, uh, I, I, I prepared more um, a complex one. And that is the one which I open here, composite bridge. Uh, maybe I can close uh, the, this whole bow. Yes. Close. So this three span bridge. Uh, but uh, let me to show briefly this presentation which I prepared for simple one. So, because they are a little bit different models uh, used in RFM and I will explain. First one is autotropic slab, which is modeled by 2D elements in RFM. You see here the geometric properties. Uh, result beams are defined in order to integrate the internal forces again. Um, this can be done uh, in any program in which you can integrate uh, the, the internal um, forces. For example, uh, Midas can do it, Midas Gen or Midas uh, Civil. Um, moving loads uh, are defined uh, and analyzed in RFM. Then uh, we export it into Excel file here. Here we have the Excel file. We add it into uh, IDEA beam. Here it is explained. We set the load groups and we design the reinforcement, calculate losses. This was pre-tensioned. Gen uh, generate uh, the construction stages in Idea Statica. This is a little bit more complicated than the example before because it was composite. And then perform detail and comprehensive sectional design in Idea pre-stressing. Here we have the final table and the um, checks which we can perform. Now I will show you how to uh, design it. Let me to open also uh, this um, beam and I will open composite continuous bridge 3D. I did it um, only in a, as, a, as a straight beam, but as it was uh, skewed, then uh, we should uh, input six components of internal forces. That's why in project data, I needed to use um, uh, 3D, it could be straight or polygonal beam loaded in 3D. Uh, so this is uncoiled view. This is the type of the structure. I can show it here. Um, we have uh, T sections with composite slab. You can see it in a transverse direction and also in a longitudinal profile, as a longitudinal profile, three span bridge with the uh, diaphragms above the support and composite section at mid span. This is the model. I will explain it here in PowerPoint. Um, so the model is such, it is uh, actually uh, 1D elements, set of 1D elements in each span. And these elements were connected by uh, autotropic slab. This model was done by Adrian Langhammer from a uh, global company. And uh, we can use then these um, beams for the design of this composite, uh, uh, composite beams in IDEA. And uh, this uh, 3D behavior, uh, this load distribution of moving loads, which is here, is guaranteed by this autotropic slab. 
And here we have the model already with construction stages in IDEA and uh, the design in IDEA. So let me to show how we can uh, deal with it. Um, first of all, I, um, of course, I, I uh, define, um, Adrian defined uh, uh, this uh, um, moving load, load cases and uh, calculated, performed uh, this analysis. And then we made this result combinations. First result combination contained uh, uh, all the uh, all the load cases, uh, which were uh, which were mo um, used to model tandem tandem system. Okay. Second um, result combination was uh, the combination which gathered together the load cases um, which modeled um, which modeled um, uh, food paths or load on put on the uh, food paths and then we have a load case which is here which was this UDL so we have three types and I can show uh, you how we can do it um, I have done it, in fact, in uh, this example. Here we have user-defined forces, and you can see that except of uh, the generated load cases for construction stages, we have TS11. So I will show you how um, we can make it. Um, I will open... Where is it? I will open... Written composite. I will open the Excel file which I made and I will go first to here. This is the, the Excel file generated by RFM. I can show you. Uh, once it is calculated, and it is now, uh, we have um, here selected only the member 14. Here, that, that's the member. And uh, we can generate the uh, combinations, the, the, the results of combinations in uh, internal forces, table 4.6, and uh, you can see that we have it along the length of uh, the uh, beam, uh, so uh, in one meter, second, third, fourth, and so on, so on, and if we press here the result filter, we can uh, uh, select only the, this is for load cases and uh, combinations, this is for uh, result combinations. You can select uh, what um, type of the, the output you need and then you export it into Excel file. So I did it like this and I get this Excel file in which uh, I have to uh, uh -huh, it was added to my my Excel file. <laughs> Even uh, rewrote my Excel file, so I, <laughs> I will not save it, and I will uh, open it again because my Excel file is already uh, processed. I would say I went through these um, uh, critical sections which I wanted to. Uh, use for the design and that was I can uh, go further uh, the mid span especially mid span of the uh, internal span and above the support of the span so uh, then I identified this uh, um, section at 8 meters and 15 meters and uh, I can see what internal forces caused by this uh, tandem system are critical. I identified five of, the, five of them caused by load cases 24, 10, 26, 11, and 38. Similarly, I did it for this UDL, uh, sorry, UDL, for this um, uh, footpath, and uh, we have only two load cases, one only, 49, and uh, UDL was the load case uh, 
48, which was one load case, and I decided to import it as a whole. So now I will show you if I, it is copy paste, copy paste to here to uh, user defined forces. You select, um, uh, for example, this TS1, and you see that um, in TS1, you have uh, these forces. And if I copy it uh, here, I can press it here and copy to here. Uh, it is in at 15 meters, so I decided to make it from, I can put it here five, so you see here the force. I decided to do it from 14.9 to 15.1, and I copy both of them, so now we have it. If I do it similarly for our other tandem systems, which was uh, one, two, three, four, five load cases, uh, footway and also the UDL. UDL was the whole load case, so you see this um, UDL forces were imported uh, as a table um, by copy paste to the whole uh, span of uh, this. Um, uh, bridge. So now I have all these uh, user-defined forces. I can go to combinations and uh, I will show you all these combinations are generated by Idea Statica uh, for the construction stages. First, contains only a few uh, load cases. Second, a little bit more. And the last one contains uh, a lot of load cases. I will show you how we construct them, but also the load cases caused by tandem, tandem system, UDL, and this pedestrian um, footpath for, 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 for pedestrians. So then the combination, sorry, <laughs> then the combination is uh, generated automatically based on Eurocode and based on these um, uh, settings for variable load groups, for UDR, for TS, and for others, uh, you are definitely familiar with that. Um, so once we have it, we I, possibly I should also show uh, the construction stages. So casting, transfer of pre-stressing, you can see the changes of boundary conditions. Here we have storage yard, uh, again casting of the second span, pre-stressing, storage yard, four seconds span, they are of different age, casting, transfer, uh, temporary supports, casting of composite slab, you see here we use intermediate support, final supports, superimposed dead loads, and end of working life, end of design working life. So these are construction stages, and uh, uh, in this um, uh, combinations with uh, moving loads were generated uh, automatically. Uh, now we run a time dependent analysis for each of these construction stage and also intermediate steps. I remember that I forgot to tell you why we cannot use this uh, interoperability three. That's because uh, there is no possibility of uh, the analysis of composite uh, cross sections and time dependent analysis and analysis of creep and shrinkage effects in RFM. So we have to, um, we can use RFM or other uh, 3D software uh, for the analysis of moving loads, export it into, uh, export it into uh, Excel file, and then the design of uh, composite. Uh, beams or bridges or any uh, composite uh, hollow core slabs can be done in Idea Statica. So now we have um, uh, Idea uh, TDA analysis, time dependent analysis almost finished. Um, after we have it, we can go to uh, the, of course, the results if we are interested in results. Here we have um, I can go through uh, the individual construction stages and, uh, for example, um, all stages. Here we have ULS fundamental. 
now we have ULS fundamental. You can see also these peaks, which were taken as a moving loads from uh, RFM. And now we go to casting, nothing happens because it is fresh concrete, transfer of pre-stressing, and similarly, as I described all the construction stages before, now we see the internal forces in all these construction and service stages. Now we have it. We go to reinforcement. I set the reinforcement already in uh, uh, reinforcement zones. I can go, I have, I didn't show, I have these positions uh, to uh, be generated. So only two sections I selected at mid span. I can calculate it and it should uh, be satisfactory. You can see the reinforcement here. Now it is finished. So if I select uh, this first one, this is at mid span and uh, let's go for example to checks response and again i can go through all the uh, transfer of pre-stressing and then other extreme of transfer of pre-stressing storage yard maybe i can switch off these bars uh, so that it is nicer then we have all other construction stages with changes of uh, now, uh, in, in this case, we have a composite slab already, uh, I would say, stiff, so it uh, <clears throat> is able to transmit the stresses. And we have other, here it is interesting, you see this uh, is uh, the, the pressure, most pressure concrete fiber. So it means that uh, the critical fiber from the point of view of concrete in compression is not um, fiber on surface. If you don't use this uh, method for uh, the analysis of the stresses, even in, at ultimate limit state, not only in serious stability limit state, then you would not get, not get this uh, uh, feature. So we have additional, you can see changes. Uh, this is the effect of uh, uh, transverse bending moment. We can discuss if it's uh, real, but uh, in case of uh, these breaches I showed here, uh, it is uh, in which we have only the uh -huh. we have uh, uh, the beams connected only uh, via the slab. So possibly there is some transverse bending moment uh, in this. Uh, uh, beams so it is not fixed and uh, the deflection is not uh, in uh, uh, vertical direction only i would say it is not uh, completely vertical so we can go further here we have additional effects at the end of this unworking glove you see that there is no stress in concrete because it was cracked by, at the ultimate limit state, it was cracked, uh, due, especially due to shrinkage, shrinkage. So that was it. Maybe we have some other. Yes. So those are different extremes. We can, uh, switch off this uh, rotation dimension lines and then it is no label uh, it is seen how what is the the uh, plane of applied stresses if we uh, switch off uh, these strains then the picture is a little bit better okay so like this so that's it. Um, I will switch into the presentation. We can see the analysis. And that's all uh, for the presentations. I would like to thank uh, you for your attention.